Paul says, if you aren't willing to work, you shouldn't eat. Let's see what's going on here in today's chapter. Welcome to the channel that kickstarts your day with a life-changing habit of Bible study. I'm Darren. I'm one of the hosts on this channel, and I'm a local pastor in Red Bank, New Jersey. It seems today that one of Paul's instructions from his first letter to the Thessalonians, well, it didn't sink in as well as perhaps he wanted it to. In the first letter, we see that Paul wrote, And we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. It was a relatively quick comment on being idle. But in the second letter, he devotes a big section to it. Let's pray together, and then we're going to read about that. God, we uh, come before you today. We thank you for the scriptures that have been preserved for us through the ages. We thank you, God, that you still speak today through your word. Lord, even though this book seems to be uh, very occasional to have a specific occasion for which it was written, we know that it is your word and we know that you still speak to us today. And I pray that, that today as we read, you, um, you sharpen us, you challenge us, you form us. Encourage us and convict us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. In addition, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil pe people, for not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and guard you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will continue to do what we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to God's love and Christ's endurance. Now we command you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from every brother or sister who is idle and does not live according to the tradition received from us. For you yourselves know how you should imitate us. We were not idle among you. We did not eat anyone's food free of charge. Instead, we labored and toiled, working night and day, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. It is not that we don't have the right to support, but we did it to make ourselves an example to you, so that you would imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, this is what we commanded you. If anyone isn't willing to work, he should not eat. For we hear that there are some among you who are idle. They are not busy, but busy bodies. Now we command and exhort such people by the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and provide for themselves. But as for you, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey our instruction in this letter, Take note of that person. Don't associate with him so that he may be ashamed. Yet don't consider him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with all of you. I, Paul, am writing this greeting with my own hand, which is an authenticating mark in every letter. This is how I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. All right, I mentioned that Paul expanded this section on being idle into a much bigger section in this, uh, in his second epistle. In fact, other than his explanation on the apostasy or the man of lawless, that section on the end times, uh, other than that, this is the biggest section of the book. So it seems probable that some of the believers were being lazy and perhaps uh, feeling justified because they thought the end of time as they knew it was actually imminent. Well, Paul firmly corrects this. 
we saw that he said we are not in the day of the Lord. We are not in that end time. Uh, and so we should act accordingly in expectation of Christ's return. We can't, however, be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. We have work to do here in the interim. Paul tells us that if we aren't willing to work, we shouldn't eat. Now, of course, there's times when we can't work, if we're sick or for a variety of other reasons. There are seasons that we need to be cared for by others. But if we're capable of working, we should be contributing. And if there's someone being idle in our community, we should exhort them and challenge them. We shouldn't treat them like an enemy, but we should correct them in love. Now, for some of us, we may overwork and we probably need to slow down to be more faithful. But others, others, we're lazy. We have to ask, what are we doing to use what God has given us, not just to make ends meet, but to do our part in making the world better? That's something to chew on today from this final chapter. As we close out these two letters to the Thessalonians, I'm, I'm going to read the verse that's been displaying each day as our memory verse. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. We'll see you all tomorrow.